Okay. So until this time, you know, when you got caught previously, you were given three years probation. You didn't do any prison time. Right. But now you're accepting a 26 year plea deal and you're 38 years old at the time, which means that if you have to serve it all out, you're getting out of 64 years old. Right. Well, with game well, time, well, I would have been 60. Yeah, I would have. It was my out date was 2030. Because, you know, good time, they, they take good time off your the 26 years. So you don't serve 26 years. You serve 23 years, you know. OK, so Which you're getting out of 60, nothing. 60 years old, right. so 61 years old, a senior citizen at that point. Right. Uh, I'm in my 40s myself. It, it's hard to comprehend giving up my 30s all the way to, to 60 years old. How hard was that to really accept a plea deal that long? Well, one, my lawyer, my public defender told me that um, several of the enhancements, you know, the dollar amount was not that much. My dollar amount loss, they said at the time was 9.5. We actually got it down, argued it down to 6 million that I lost. They are 6 million unaccounted for. So um, the dollar amount wasn't what really got me. That probably should have got me five or 10 years. What got me was the enhancements. It, they hit you with all these hits, sophisticated means, changing jurisdictions to avoid detection, using a specialty device, uh, using multiple identities. So they keep adding these fuck these enhancements on you. That's what got me up to 26 years. So I take the plea deal because she tells me a lot of these enhancements don't apply and she's going to go in front of the judge and argue and the judge is going to remove them. So I feel like I'm really pleading guilty to probably 12 years. So that was easier to swallow. And she seemed so confident that I was like, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. So I'd already done a year. So I go in front of the judge and she starts arguing the enhancements and the judge says, I, I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. Overruled, overruled, overruled. 26 years and four months is what he got me. 316 months. So yeah, that was a, so yeah, I, at that point when I stood up and I just wrote, listen, I'd love to tell you, I took it like a champ. Fuck, <laughs> cried like a baby, like a small child. I mean, it was, I, I couldn't stop crying. I think I cried from the fucking courthouse all the way until they got me back to uh, the uh, <laughs> marshal's hold, uh, holdover. I mean, I just couldn't fathom that I'd done anything to warrant 26 years. Just unbelievable. But I also thought that I would be able to get my sentence reduced because when I got caught, one of the things they asked me to do was they asked me to be interviewed by Dateline. Dateline had done a one hour, sp a special on me. They asked me to be, to be interviewed by Dateline. So I was interviewed by Dateline. They then ran another one hour special on me. And I was told by the US attorney that they would consider that substantial assistance, which means they would reduce your, technically what substantial assistance means is you cooperated against another individual and that cooperation furthered an investigation which led to an arrest, okay? Well, the people I cooperated against hadn't been arrested. So the U.S. attorney said, At, tell Cox to do this Dateline interview and we'll consider that substantial assistance. Well, so I kept, so the night before my sentencing, they said, yeah, you know, I know he did the interview, but it's really not enough to reduce his sentence. So we're not going to give him, we're not going to reduce his sentence. Okay. So you get sentenced to 26 years and you end up doing... 13 years. Right. Right. Well, I go to prison and American Greed contacts my lawyer and the U.S. attorney and me, and they ask if I'll be interviewed. And I said, sure, I'll be interviewed. Of course, the U.S. attorney said, make, tell him to tell him we want him to be interviewed. We'll consider it substantial assistance. Now, keep in mind, they'd already told me this other thing was substantial assistance. They didn't do it. But what choice do I have? Do I tell him, go fuck yourself or do I take a shot? And I'm I'm not doing, I don't want to do 26 years. So I get interviewed by American Greed. Um, and uh, they run the episode. 
and we go to the U.S. attorney. My attorney says, okay, he did the episode, reduced the sentence. And they said, yeah, it's not, it's just not worth it. It's not enough. But you said you'd consider it substantial assistance. Uh, and they go, yeah, we, and we have, we did consider it and it's not enough. Okay. So then about a year later, I get contacted by a mortgage, uh, um, by a mortgage school that teaches mortgage brokers and teaches continuing education. This guy comes in named Jim Montrum. He asked me to write an ethics and fraud course based on my case. I'm one of the few more front with few guys out there committing bank fraud or mortgage fraud that owned a mortgage company in such a flamboyant way, right? Such a blazant, uh, brazen way. So I write, I write this ex ethics and fraud course and they use it to help teach mortgage brokers ethics and fraud, right? And continuing education. U.S. attorney told my attorney and Jim Montrum they would, she would consider it substantial assistance and reduce my sentence. So I do it. They start using it. We go to her. Hey, they're doing it. They did what you said. And she goes, yeah, it's just not enough. 